So good morning. Yep, they just told me that. Awesome. Good morning to you too. Thank you so yeah. much for being here, Ernie. I'm so excited. You're, you're more than welcome. Oh, thank yeah, you. me too. And thank you for uh, all the help that you, you've done here on, on your drawings, finishing oh, it. You're welcome. Thank you for your help because I couldn't do any of it without you. Um, I am so excited to tell your story because, I mean, for you to tell your story because your story has to me such profound implications i mean it's not just a regular sighting it's yeah. it's amazing in so many ways yeah. thank yeah. you yeah so could you just tell everybody everyone welcome to sketching encounters um i have on the show today ernie davio and i want him to just tell just tell us a little bit about yourself and then a kind of start with the area where your sighting happened and then just every detail sure. don't leave anything out oh i'll try <laughs> to do that um well i i, I uh, really don't know what to say too much about myself other than uh um i was i've been a hunter fisherman all my life up until this happened um it was 36 years ago. Uh, I've got a military background. I've got a big background in, in martial arts. Um, I, I think that's about it. I don't. I don't know what else to to say to anybody. It, it just, it just, no, that's, that's perfect. About it for me. No, that's perfect. Tell us a little bit about the area where um, you had this encounter. Yeah, um, this area. Uh, is a very steep in history. It's in the state of Massachusetts. It's up in the hill towns of uh, Western Mass in the Cobble Mountain region. On uh, uh, Drake Mountain, uh, right next to Cobble Mountain. Uh, I've hunted and fished in that area for many years. Uh, my brother and I used to do a lot of hunting and fishing in Vermont, Maine, New Hampshire, Connecticut, Massachusetts. And this happened to be one of my favorite places. I like to go in where nobody else goes in. I like to go in far enough that I'm not going to uh, happen upon anybody. And, uh, the biggest telltale sign that, that we look for is people leave behind cans and things like that. When I stop finding cans and, and wrappers and things like that, I know I'm getting in deep enough. And uh, that's where I was. Uh, the area in itself, there's news accounts in the, the paper, the town paper on uh, what they call the black lady or the white lady that uh, people would, would hear scream once in a while in that area. I never believed it. I hunted that area one time with another uh, friend of mine one time. He was terrified to go in there by himself, so we went in together. He told me why. It was because he heard the screaming in there. Wow. And, uh, yeah, they've had uh, two historical accounts in there of hunters being found with their necks broken. Uh, none of this bothered me. It didn't bother me. I, I actually felt pretty good about it, that I, I was <laughs> sure that nobody else was going to be going in there. And being adjacent to the Cobble Mountain Reservoir, there's uh, a cemetery, actually two cemeteries in there. They're both named, have the same name, ironically. They're both on the same side of the reservoir called Warfield Cemetery. One of them dates back to the Underground Railroad. Wow. And some of the headstones in there say killed by the beast. Um, wow. That's incredible. Yeah, that, yeah. So, but I, I never, I mean, growing up, uh, I have seen sign, but I passed it off. Looking back on it after this account, which happened about 36 years ago, I've had a long time to think about it. Mm -hmm. I've, I've seen the tracks before when I was younger, out hunting with my father and my great uncle. He was a guide up in Maine uh, during the Depression, and he also worked in lumber but we always passed it off. My brother and I always passed it off. They never spoke of it. They never told us. They would say we, we 
need to clear out of the woods. Get out of. The, we need to leave here. We're not supposed to be here. We're not supposed to be hunting here. And I'm, I used to say, "Well, really low. is it because we got a crazy naked man running around barefoot in the snow up here?" I mean, you're, you're kids. You don't. I mean, when I say kids, I mean only in in age. You know, because I, obviously, eleven uh, year olds and twelve year olds don't go out with a shotgun hunting deer anymore. We did. We grew up with guns. As soon as we could pick one up, we were taught how to use it. Um, the morning that that I decided that I was going to go out there and hunt because I I I needed some some meat for the freezer. I need some food. As I geared up, and uh, of course I I had topographical maps of the area. I had mm-hmm. scouted it many times. It was it's a beautiful beautiful area, and. Uh, I knew where the deer were coming through their trails. I knew where they ate. I knew where these deer were going to be that morning with a high possibility, very high. And I parked on the opposite end of the mountain on the south side. It was a, or wait a minute, west, the, the east side of the mountain at the easy Granville Reservoir side. And uh, I started hiking in. It was the only way in. It was on a fire road that was adjacent to the reservoir and uh then there was an old old trail road that cut off to the left and, and wound its way up the side of the mountain and uh about halfway up is where i highly suspected these deer were going to be and there's uh, three boulders huge huge boulders on the top there i, I used to look at it like it was like a stone hinge they were one was about 75 feet tall. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was two more boulders. They're pretty in, in, in very close proximity to each other. I mean, you could go in between them. You could make a campsite in between them. And because of the way the wind was blowing, uh, I figured that's where the deer were going to be, and I wanted to downwind. It was uh, kind of crispy out that morning. It was a little bit of frost on the ground. And it was the about... I think the first week of December of that year. And I, as I got up towards those boulders where I suspected the deer would be, I jumped them. You, you can tell um, when you jump a deer, it's, it's, it, it makes a louder noise than if you scared a rabbit or a squirrel. Sure. So um, I was, I was excited. I knew that uh, I had jumped them. The, the, trick at that point was to get out in front of them. I knew where they were possibly headed across the top of the ridge across uh, Drake Mountain. And my objective was to cut them off. And I had learned the trick of not walking or not sounding like I was two-legged, like bipedal. I sound more like a four-legged animal. Be as quiet as you possibly can, but if it picked up your sound, it would sound more like a four-legged animal to them. So where I could step on some stones, and there was a lot of stones, big, big, giant, flat stones on that trail. And, of course, a couple of uh, dirt spots that I had to be careful on when walking. I two-step. That's when you're going your, your toe, your heel, your toe, your heel. And uh, I could hear them now paralleling me. And I, I think back on it, and it, it was... Um, I wondered, I kept wondering why they were paralleling that road so precisely. They would stop and it, it sounded like they were maybe grazing or something, but mm-hmm. I could hear something off to their other side. I didn't know if it was a buck. I assumed that it was. Mm-hmm. I'm still not thinking that there's a, you know, a Sasquatch in the area or you know, anything else like that. So I kept doing that, and they would stop, I would stop, and I, I would go while they were going and try to hustle a little bit as quiet as I could. My objective was probably about, I want to say, a quarter mile. Ahead of them, there was a, a, a stone wall that um, uh, cut straight across uh, to a brook on the other side they would have to come through these small hardwood saplings and over the stone wall. And then there was a set of pines. Um, There, 
they're healthy pines. They're uh, they weren't really um, some. If you walk into some pine areas, uh, the trees are really close together. They weren't really that close together. Mm -hmm. Maybe a hardwood or two next to the stone wall, and then it was big pines after that. And the road that the uh, road or passage, you want to call it, that I was on actually could go straight across to the other side of the mountain where it would hook it hooked to the right and went almost back on itself i think people call that a dog leg mm -hmm. and there was a, a, a brook on the other side i had gotten out to that point i was just happy but trying to control my uh my emotions that i you know wow i did this i'm you know i'm, I'm gonna take a position they're gonna come in uh to those set of hardwood saplings then they're going to come over to stone wall which was i, I want to say probably i think maybe 40 40 to 50 yards away i knew that i could make a shot with a shotgun pretty easily for me no bragging there but i i'm pretty <laughs> sure that i could have got i could have got one that day i was excited you know and as i i was in the open pretty much. And as I took a position, of, like almost a kneeling position on one leg, I noticed something off to my left uh, next to a tree. I want to go back on that, that, that noise I heard on the other side of them. It, it, it was heavier you know, when I think back on it. So it still didn't register with me. But sure. this thing that was next to me at about 35 yards away it was at the base of a tree, a hardwood tree. It caught my attention, and I thought that that was a buck because of they don't really hang around the does. You know, they follow them around, but they're really not. The bigger ones are not in with them because you're going to cause a fight with the younger ones. And, you know, the, the the does themselves, and I've seen the does defend themselves, you know, which is crazy, but. It appeared that it was a deer, so I immediately, still keep in position, I, I, I quarter turn towards it with my, my shot, I'm figuring that's my deer, I got my deer right there. And uh, it started to get up a little bit. I said, oh, geez, bro, that's a, I don't believe that's a, that's a deer, I, that's, that's a heavy body, that's, I, I think that that's bigger than a deer. I said, it's got to be a bear because it started getting up a little bit more, but it was still low to the ground, and it started getting up a little bit more. I said, it's a bear. And I, I started uh, not panicking, but I, I, I wanted to guard myself that if this is a bear, I don't have a bear permit for Massachusetts. I don't believe you can hunt bear at that time of the year in the state of Massachusetts, but I don't want this thing to see me and decide that what it's going to do is come after me. Sure. So I got my my shotgun on it, but I'm still kind of cognizant of those deer on the other side of that stone wall. Even though I can't see them, I hear them, and I hear something going on over there. It just didn't sound right. At the same time, this thing starts to get up more. I'm going, oh god, it's not a it's not a bear. It's a guy. It's a guy. It's it's more of that form of a guy but really close to the base of the tree you know so i'm saying to myself gosh this uh there's another hunter here mm -hmm. that i'm i'm not i'm not in his peripheral i need to get in his peripheral because if them deer they are definitely going to come over that stone wall if they come over that stone wall and one of them gets in between us and we don't know i'm here he's going to shoot me yeah and I, I can't have that, you know? Yeah, and he's close. I don't have anything to hide behind. Yeah. Yeah. He's close, yeah. 35 yards. It's, it's shotgun season there. Uh, yeah, I, I wasn't comfortable with that. So I kind of scooched forward a little bit where I felt I was now in his peripherals where he would catch, at least catch movement and be aware that I was there. I did that. I scooched forward and this thing got up a little bit more. I'm like, oh, gosh. And now I, I uh, it's almost like all heck broke loose. 
in in the woods over there on the other side of the stone wall i'm I, i'm like oh man that's that's i it, it, you can tell when bucks are fighting you know or whether they're rubbing on a tree you know they're hitting their horns on a tree and it wasn't like that this was, this was more like uh I was like, say, all hell broke loose in here. It was a knockdown drag out going on in here. And now I'm like, I'm expecting them to come. And this, and this thing, I'm still trying to be, you know, aware of this guy over there. And he stands up even more. I'm like, oh my God. I said, that's, that can't be a guy. That's, that would be the biggest man I've ever seen in my life. I've seen a couple of big guys. My uncle Donald, my father's brother, he was six foot 11 and a half, almost 400 pounds. That's a pretty big guy. You know, yeah. of course, yeah. I had never seen these modern day basketball players, but that's a pretty big guy. <laughs> and uh, this thing, this thing stood up and uh, and it had its, it basically had its head on the left hand side of that tree. But I can still see the back of his head. So I'm I'm trying to find a mark on that tree where it is that I can definitely go over maybe later on if i'm able to and figure out the height of it i'm already taking information in right. this is not a man there's no orange here this is not a man this is something way different than that and uh it swung it swung its right leg around the tree to my side and its head at the same time it was watching what was going on on the other side of that stone wall mm -hmm. And when it did, it was still, I marked it off perfectly on the tree, you know, to match that, the back of his head perfectly on a tree because he's standing straight up on that tree. He's hiding behind the tree. He's using it for cover. You know, mm -hmm. as big as he was, as, yeah, you know, he's doing it. Um, that's when he noticed me. And he took a double take on me. And I knew in that instant when he looked at me, that uh, it wasn't it wasn't a guy. It wasn't a guy. Um, I remember feeling I really don't know what's going to go down here. I got my shotgun on it. I could almost care less about the deer on the other side of that stone wall at that point. But uh, he looked directly at me. Took a double take on me. A complete double take like like he couldn't believe i was standing there you know and i'm like oh, God. i i knew i i knew i do and it sounds funny when i say it i have no other word to say it i said to myself that's a sasquatch that's a sasquatch you know i didn't say bigfoot i i didn't uh think anything else i knew instantly what it was and at 35 yards i was taken aback by the fact of what it actually looked like. Um, and then it did something. It, it stepped away from the tree and it took a step towards me and it put both its hands out, palms facing me, not stretched completely out, but palms facing me, kind of a little bit bent at the elbows between the shoulders and the stomach area, and kind of just pumped it just a little bit. You know, like, whoa, whoa. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, God. I'm, I, I mean, I don't know what anybody else would have done. It was it was gaining my confidence. You know, when I look back on it, it, it knew how to approach me. And, and, and uh, I don't know what, what I would have done if, if, if uh, I just kind of relaxed a little bit. I, I, I went to like half arms on me. Had it at, at, at full port rate on him, and I lowered my shotgun barrel, still up into my shoulder a little bit, but barrel down a little bit. It seemed like it was telling me that, um, you know, take it easy, whoa, take it easy. And it started walking towards me, and I, I was still a little bit uneasy with this. I'm, I'm like, right, just like you are right now, thinking in your head, like, like this really seriously. This is this is bizarre. Um, I I took a count of my breath. I remember breathing out to see which way my the wind was blowing because I could see my breath that morning. 
I, I was looking at my, I took a glance at my wristwatch. I had the stock of my, my shotgun up towards my shoulder. So I, I pointed my shotgun down. I was able to put the compass on my shotgun, uh, a little compass to the, my uncle's, uh, my great uncle's shotgun. So he had put one on there. It doesn't really work that well because the gun is metal. But, you know, <laughs> I, I, I remember a plane going overhead. Yeah. All those saying things. Myself, I have to, I, I, yeah, I mean, am, am I dreaming what's going on here? You know, this is, is this real? What time is this? Uh, I, I had to check my breath, everything. I'm, I'm sucking it all in every bit of information that I possibly can, because if it was real, I needed to remember every detail I could possibly remember because I'm not running. I'm, I'm not running because I knew, I knew that as this thing was closing the distance, Walking towards me, kind of cautiously, this thing looked like it definitely for sure it could outrun me. If it bum rushed me, I was in a lot of trouble, a whole lot of trouble. And I would rather have it bum rush me facing me than bum rush me with me running away screaming. I didn't want to feel like a rabbit or something being run down by a coyote, you know? Yeah. So it kept walking towards me. And as I was sucking in the information and looking at, looking at it, I was, I was, I was looking at its, uh, its body, its, its face. As it got closer, I could see it better. Um, and then it pointed with one finger, its right hand, with one finger to my chest. And then it pointed to one finger to its own chest. And uh, it's taken me a long, long time to, find this because there's just little bits and pieces of information that are out there and of course it's going to blow your mind i mean who would have ever expected that i mean seriously who you, you don't go walking uh, into the jungle to go see the great apes and all of a sudden they start doing this stuff with you you know pumping their hands and whoa 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 take it easy i only want a banana or pointing your finger at you and then them and it was it yeah. was it was bizarre. So I had to suck it all in and try to remain calm. I know what it was doing today. Um, and it was kind of uh, set me back a little bit. It made me feel comfortable when it did that because most people hearing this right now, you can assume that it, it was telling me that, that basically we're friends or whatever. In all actuality, because it used one finger, it was signifying and it used me first that we were equal, that I wasn't better than it, and that we were brothers when it pointed to its own chest. It pointed to me first. After that, it continued walking towards me. And it put its both hands out again in front of it down towards its waist, lower to its waist, palms down. And again, I'm sucking all this in. I'm going, this is, this is unbelievable. And then it turned its palms up. And I said, oh, man. I knew then and there that uh, I assumed, I should say, that uh, it was telling me it didn't have anything. Mm -hmm. And it was asking me for something. And I also knew that it was set up on a pinch point, on an ambush point, and that these deer that were coming through were being hunted by something other than me, and that it was in there with them, that there was indeed more than one. That was my opinion yeah. at the time, that that knockdown drag out that I heard in there was them. Right. And since no deer came through, during all this that was going on with him, um, yeah, they they got a deer. Uh, after it did that, with his hands down and then his hands and palms up, it again, it was very close at that point, very extremely close. It pointed to my, I believe it was my left, pointed to my right over my shoulder. I didn't know how to take it. I didn't know if it 
trying to tell me, you know, get the, get the heck out of here or where the heck did you come from? And I, <laughs> and I took it as where the heck did you come from? Yeah. And then it stood there and it was close enough. I remember seeing the palms of its hands. And I know it's a lot of information for other people to take in. I know nobody's ever heard anything like this. It, uh, the palms are just like our palms, just like a man's palms or a woman's palms. It had the same mark, the same exact mark as them. palms. So now I'm thinking, it was looking at me. I've seen its eyes. I've seen the color of its eyes. His eyes were blue. There is a there is a, a a weird thing there. But I was calm. I was kind of calm at that time. And I took that last hand signal it made to me as okay. It's time for me to try to communicate back with it. At that time, I I had my shotgun. I had a. a, a an improvised sling for my shotgun so that I could climb over things if I had to, you know, mm -hmm. stone walls or whatever the case may be. And I, I had slung it so that I could grab it quick, but I had a nine millimeter on it. And I remember putting my hand when it got really close to me down towards my nine. And uh, it made a gesture at me, and I think it was with its hands. I, I have just a second or two there that that we were that close and I, I took my hand off it. And I think that's at the point where I, I, I got, I knew I had to communicate back with that, I had to do something. I don't know where we were going to go from there after I did that. Yeah. You know, I was maybe wishing that they were going to sit down and smoke a cigarette together or, <laughs> or whatever, because you know, this is, this is weird. Okay. And how close and, was uh, was he? How close was he at this point? You know, and, and I've had people ask me that. I've been on a, a, another show, uh, mm -hmm. uh, two other ones, three other ones actually. And I got to tell you, when I really think about this, and it and it's kind of disturbs me in a way. Mm -hmm. I used to say about five yards, but I remember when I repeated some of the hand gestures back at him. Um, I remember being very close to his shoulder. Uh, his shoulder was above my head. I'm almost six foot three, six foot three, call it. And I'd say five feet, five wow. feet away at wow. that point. Um, I did uh, basically the hand, same hand gestures back to him that he did to me, except for the part where he put his palms up. You know, when he put his palms down, then he put his palms up. Because I took it to mean I have no food. Do you have any food? And since he's the one that did that palms down first, I just wanted to, I didn't want to ask him for food. It was pretty obvious to me. He didn't have any. He's, they were over there hunting, you know. So mm -hmm. I put my palms down. I didn't have any. And then I, I pointed over its shoulder. It was facing me over its shoulder to its left and over its shoulder to its right. And he looked at me, and uh, that was pretty much it right there. Um, like I said, I took in, I, I could see the wrinkles in his face. I was sucking in all the info that I possibly could. It, its nose, its teeth, its complexion, its fingernails, its hair, the texture of its hair, the length of its hair. I was, the whole time I was trying to suck in all this information. I said, I need to do this because Someday, someday, I want to be able to recount this story. Hopefully, uh, it's not before I'm really, really old. I don't remember anything except I had an encounter. And I was hoping that if somebody ever said, well, you know, if you want to hypnotize you, put you on a lie detector, please do. Because yeah. I, 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 I challenge it. You know, put yeah. the money on the table. Here we go. If yeah. I'm wrong, then you can make fun of me, put me in the papers or whatever, and tell you, take your money back and walk away. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I think I'm going to be, I'm going to get away from that table and take the money. Cash, by the way, folks, cash. <laughs> uh, 
I'm not that it's worth anything today, probably, but um, and he did. He looked at me and kind of nodded his head at me. He had the beautiful blue eyes, beautiful like 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 an ice blue, ice blue. I've seen deer with blue eyes, and and when they pass, they have brown eyes. And you've even shared with me the fact that fish when you're out there in the ocean fishing some fish actually have blue eyes mm -hmm. and they change color a bit when they pass particularly and maybe you know maybe they they have control over that and it helps them see better in the in the shadows or whatever because i know that people with anything other than blue eyes they can they, they can uh, absorb more light that, that's that's out there but uh, he, he nodded his head towards me and then he turned towards that area that uh, the um, knockdown drag out happened on the other side of that stone wall. And uh, uh, he made three whoop noises. That's when I say I was standing right next to him. I could see where I stood on his shoulder because he was that close. But he made three whoop noises. And in between each whoop noise, it was about a second and a half. It was very precise. It wasn't whoop, whoop, whoop. It was whoop and very, very deep, very deep. Uh, and he held both hands up like you would be calling long distance to somebody, like yelling their name out. He had both his hands up to his, his mouth. Um, I don't know wow. If you see me, but like that, right, yeah. right up to his mouth. Wow. And then he looked back at me again and then back towards there. And he whistled, and I'm saying to myself, "Oh my God!" I said, "Look, I, I said he's whistling. Said, he's whistling. There's not many animals in the woods that can do something like that." He sounded just like when we hunted our hunting party. We would periodically whistle, um, you know, try to make the noise of a bird or whatever. But we would periodically whistle so that we knew where each other were, sure. as we would have one guy on track. The other guys would spread out. One guy would stay with the guy that was on track, and the other guys would spread out, and we would whistle back and forth to know where we were. If somebody had, you know, they got sight, or if they, sure. if they we were closing in on the track. Yeah. And he whistled, and he whistled like, and then he did an arm signal like, "Come on, come on over here," and he pointed in the direction that he came from. And I, I, again, at that moment, I said, uh, "Yeah." I'm Kind of glad I did not shoot him because um, I would not be able to walk out of here. There's more than there's more than one. And uh, he looked back at me and nodded his head back at me. And then he lumbered off in that direction. He went about 50, 55 yards. And right as he stopped, another one broke the tree line over from where those deer were on the other side of the stone wall. That one, that second one was a little bit shorter, about a foot shorter. Um, it, it was a different color. It was like a cinnamon grizzly color, you know. And uh, if it wanted to catch a deer, I tell people, don't ever think that these things can't. They most definitely can. They're most, they most, de excuse me, most definitely are very smart. Yeah. They can, they hunt. You know, if they hunt, they're definitely, if it's a spirit, it's an awfully hungry spirit that it wants to eat a deer. You know, I mean, <laughs> I mean these are just facts. That's what I tell people. This is just a fact. This is my encounter. This is what I've seen. Um, it, it joined up with the other one. And as it joined up with the other one, it, it, the big one there, um, when I measured it off on the tree, he was seven foot eight inches on that tree. Wow. I estimated him to be to be anywhere from 500, about 500 pounds, very, very fit. He wasn't less than 500, I'll say that, you know. Uh, could have been 600 or something, but I'd say 500 plus pounds. And I'm pretty good at that because I have a martial arts background and, and I've had a lot of fights. And I can pretty much size a guy up. Mm -hmm. um, I have an extensive martial arts background in competition. Uh, as, as the other one joined him, he kind of, uh, they were quarter turned towards me. 
and he started that murmuring. I had, up till then, I had never seen any videos or anything or ever heard anything like that. Years later, I had heard the Sahara sounds. Mm -hmm. I said, these people have no idea what they have. They have no idea. I said, that's them. That's them. And I told people before, I said, if you've never seen a dog, you heard barking, you can't say, oh, that's a dog. It could be the parrot. Particularly if you've never seen the parrot. You don't know which one is making the noise or if either one is. But once you see that animal and that noise, then you can put the two together. It's like a musician, singer. You don't know what they look like until you see them. Right. And at that, yeah, it, it, it was a murmur. It was people say it's like samurai chatter uh, because it, it, some of the words are you can almost make out very deep. And I could hear the other one. They were like having a little conversation there for a couple <laughs> seconds anyways. <laughs> and, he, and he pointed towards me. He kind of scooched down a little bit so he could point underneath the, the limbs of, the, of a couple saplings that were sort of kind of in our way. And he pointed right at me. And the uh, one that ran over to him, now I want to say is the big one there is I tell people, you know, um, you know, black or brown hair, it was dark, dark, dark brown where you could say it was black. You know, uh, some people, their hair is so dark brown that it looks black, but it's really dark brown, mm -hmm. dark, dark brown. And being that, that close to him, I can tell you right now, it's dark brown. Um, he pointed me out and the other one was just totally like, like amazed. I mean, you could just see the amazement, even at 50 yards, I could see like, 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 wow, holy kishmoli. I and mean, there's a guy <laughs> standing over there, <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe he never, he never seen one before. Or she never seen one before, whatever it was. But then the big one pointed to the other one, like to his chest and then pointed over his shoulder to where it wanted him to go. I, I understood that. Then it pointed to its own chest, like I'm, and he pointed in the opposite direction, going to go over there. <laughs> up to that, up to, yeah, up to that point, I'm saying to myself, you know, maybe I want to follow them to see where they go. I'd like to know more about them, you know. I'd like to track them. And are they going to go in a cave or where are they going to go? And I know people who are hearing this are, are, are going to say, what would possess you <laughs> to actually do that? Well, yeah. <laughs> I guess it's just the way that I grew up. I was inquisitive. I, 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 I wasn't all that scared at that point, you know? But yeah. when it did that, I, inst I instantly knew they didn't want to be followed. Um, and they had a perfect opportunity to, no matter which path I chose, that one of them could come up behind me, that one of them could keep an eye on me. Mm -hmm. and I didn't want that to happen so they left and I said I gotta I gotta suck it up I can't I can't freeze here I I, I watched it lumber off and I say lumber off it didn't it didn't run it kind of like it didn't jump it just took these big huge strides and I said okay I gotta piece it together I gotta go over I gotta look at the tracks see if I can find the tracks and it was Basically, uh, it ran through um, a, pretty much a dry vernial pool area. It wasn't not. It wasn't soft. It was. It was like a thick, uh, uh, grassy type stuff there, and it was matted down. So I said, "Okay, that's that's his path. I know that. I can see that. I I need to to uh, see how far the stride is. I I couldn't duplicate it. Even if even if I jump." Uh, you know, off of one foot and tried to land in his track, I still couldn't do it, all right? Yeah. So I'm saying, I go, okay, okay, he was a big guy, all right, and I went over to the tree, and I seen my mark, but I, I, you know, it was like a little piece of mold on the tree that I, I tried to find where I could mark him off, and I stood up next to the tree, put my hand up on, on top of my head on the tree, then left my hand there and stepped back, and I'm a butcher by trade, so I measured up with my hand off of that mark. And, uh, you know, I told people I was a little disappointed. I figured, you know, Sasquatches, I thought they were like 9, 10, 11 feet tall. And they're probably, there's some out there. 
yeah. that are like that from what I hear, but he was only seven foot eight. And I'm like, oh, darn me. I got, I must've got a run here or something. <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm like, you know, and, and of course I, I try, you know, don't let my demeanor fool, fool you as I try to keep a sense of humor in for my own well-being on a lot of things. Okay. Um, and particularly in this situation, again, I didn't want to freeze up. I wanted to remain uh, aware of my surroundings and everything that was going on. I wasn't quite so sure that sure. there was only two of them. Because to me, it sounded like one of them came out of the trees on top of these deer. But they were using boulders. I mean, they had a battle royale going on in there. And had he not been there in front of me, in my presence, I, I might have just, just felt, I would have been skipping out of the woods away from that, figuring that, man, there's something that I don't know what it is. I'm not going over there. I never did go over there after all of this. You know, I, I didn't, I knew they got one. I didn't need to see it. It was theirs. I didn't know if they would become aggressive on the kill or what. I only knew that at that point when it signaled the other one on which way to go and which way it was going to go, that they could flank me if they wanted to. And at that point, as I, I'm, I didn't feel secure mm -hmm. in that area, and I knew that I had to leave the area. I had survival gear on me. I was hunting by myself. I had plenty of rope on me, I had 25, 30 feet of rope at least in case I got one. And it was too heavy for me to drag. I could hang it so the other animals couldn't get it and then bring somebody else in there to help me drag it out of there. Um, I backed down not the same way I came because it kind of dog-legged on the area that he was, the smaller one was actually headed towards, you know, down what they call uh, Drake Brook. It comes out of the top of the mountain there and goes down the side of the mountain. Um, I didn't want to go in that direction. So I basically back out of there, uh, down the side of the opposite side of the, the mountain, uh, basically towards where I parked. And I used my rope in some spots to just sling it around a tree so that it keeps stability to lower myself down a little bit because it was pretty, it was pretty darn steep. It's, you're not going to just just uh, walk down it. It's, it's it's basically too steep to do that in some spots. It's, mm -hmm. it's dangerous. You know, you, you rocks could slide up underneath your feet. And I felt more secure because the trees were big trees and I didn't know what they were going to do. They really couldn't ambush me. I could see everything down below me. You know, their, um, the foliage down there was, was hardwood, but it was basically on the ground because the fall time, the leaves had fallen. But I could see very, very far. So if it was coming through, even down there, I could stay on the side of that ridge and defend myself if I needed to. And uh, I got out of the area and uh, I just went home and uh, took a shower and I, I was shaking. I mean, I was shaking, I couldn't stop shaking for a couple of days and I decided I was gonna try to draw it. I felt like I was in encounters of the third kind. I would keep drawing it and tossing it and drawing it and tossing it. I thought I can't keep doing this. It's consuming me. And just to, you know, share with people, it, it's consumed me really uh, my whole life in a way, mm -hmm. you know, um, feeling that what, what, what would people ever think of this? I tried to share it with somebody one time, a, a professional in, in this subject, and uh, they came right out and uh, they said, you're crazy. They, of course, 36 years ago, nobody ever heard of this. Nobody knew it kind of noises they made nobody ever seen one whistle or whoop or murmur i call it you know that that samurai chatter and for me to see all of this yeah. and and the hand signals and i can understand those hand signals you know why they use them because if there are multiple species of these or you know like humans how did the trappers communicate with all the indians the Apaches didn't know Hopi. The Hopi didn't know Navajo. They needed sign language. How do these things communicate? They can communicate by using sign language. 
that is what they do. And, and that it didn't know what language I spoke. And that's why it was using sign language. I mean, obviously I didn't speak samurai ch chatter, you know, it, <laughs> I pretty much, I think, figure that out. I can just say to people that they are by far more intelligent than you think they are. Beating on the side of a tree to me is the equivalent of if you go to the Mohawk Trail and Indians do this, they sit up on the ridges when you see the old cowboy movies or whatever, and they're watching out into the plains to see the wagon trains come in or whatever. They travel in family groups. These mm -hmm. things travel in family groups. They hunt as a family or whatever in a group. Mm -hmm. They communicate and they watch. Long before you enter them woods, they know that you're there. Mm -hmm. You know, if there was any kind of a pattern in there knocking on a tree, we people would have figured it out by now. Some people say, well, there it's the number of people that are in the party. Well, maybe it is, but maybe it isn't. But let's just say that it's definitely a warning to the other ones, because this one's watching, that they need to get up and get ready. You know, mm -hmm. like they don't have they don't have to they're carrying around. I don't need weapons or anything like that, you know, in, in my opinion, anyways. Um, so they're watching. They know that you're there. There's old trails There's in that area that I was in. There are old uh, Indian trails. And, and, and they're, they're uh, logged down. They're historical. That a lot of the uh, people in, in the early towns would use those trails to mm -hmm. go to, um, you know, uh, cut across the mountains mm -hmm. to another town, you know, sure. and, and uh, carry on business there. And, and um, they use those. They're, the, the feed, um, when I hunted that area, I knew everything about my prey, my deer. I knew what they ate. I knew where there was an abundance of it. I knew there was where there was water. I knew there were, where there was cover for them to lay down. And for people to go in and, and just think that you're just going to happenstance upon one, no, it's not going to happen. They know you're there. This one here, I had everything in my favor that day. It never, ever suspected that anybody would be in, coming into that area. The wind was in my favor. Uh, when it's colder out, deer actually will snort a lot because they can't smell as well. They have to clear their nostrils out, all right? Um, just like a person, I mean, you could uh, stand outside. You're not going to smell a lot of stuff out there because it's too cold, you know? Um, I, I think that's about all I have. I, 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 I wish people would uh, um, go in and learn how to survive in the woods mm -hmm. for three nights, not a night, three nights. That's how long it's going to take a ranger. They, they're not even going to come in and look for you. I've been in situations where they will come out and they will tell you, you know, lost people. We've gone into areas as, as a hunting party only to have the wardens waiting for us when we come out to say, you guys know the area. We've got some lost hunters in there. Can you go in and get them? The, the wardens will not go in there. The rangers will not go in there for at least 24 hours. Usually it's 48 hours. Yeah. And you need to survive in that. You need to uh, know what you're looking at, know what you're looking for, become accustomed to it. You know, go out and look for deer. Uh, go out deeper mm -hmm. than anybody else goes. Yeah. Um, find out, like, what I have. What do they eat? And... How do they get from point A to point B? Yeah. But under no circumstances should we, I don't believe, should we trust them to look in a way, even though this one was trustworthy, just like people, I think that they, there's good and there's bad. Yes. This yeah. one happened to be good. It yeah. happened to be good. I later on in life uh, was in Georgia with my wife and went to a powwow. Like I said, it, it, it's hung with me all my life. And I was led in back to people who take care of the history of uh, a particular Indian nation are the women. And the tribal police were there. And uh, I had asked them, 
you know, or the, was there somebody here I could speak with? And they went and they got this lady. She was like the medicine woman. She usually is sitting and she tells stories to the children and stuff at a powwow. And she told me to wait. She was going to so introduce me to somebody that would be interested in talking with me. And they led me through the tent area and I went back and they, she left me there. And I walked into this, it was like a makeshift room that was made out of uh, hides or whatever. And in there was uh, a chief. And he's a very famous chief, and his name is Ernie. And he is the uh, uh, the great 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 grandson of, I believe it's, I want to say, Crazy Horse. Oh, I know it's Crazy Horse or Sinbo, one of them. Like, it's been a long time. And I spoke with him, and and uh, he had a lot of questions for me. And in the end, uh, he told me he said that um, you walk in two worlds. I never under really understood that. And quite obviously, uh, I interpreted it like I walked in a world where I could have died that day, but I didn't, you know, but I, I, under, I understand it now is, uh, um, and that's why this thing was comfortable with me. He said that they actually, they've been watching you and they watch over you when you're out there. And my, my wife uh, one time while we were snowmobiling way out on the Canadian border, we were way out there. We stopped in this clearing and she heard the murmur and murmuring and drew my attention to it. We had shut the sleds off. And uh, at the tree line edge of this clearing, I could hear murmuring about a uh, hundred yards or so away. And I just said, we got to get out of here, you know? And she didn't want to, she said, I want to see him. And I said, well, no, I don't, I don't really want to see him. I don't. <laughs> you know yeah I, I had pretty much had enough I had I had really never gone to the woods ever again for 20 years I mean I hadn't gone in the woods walking in the woods wow and snowmobiling was I'm, I'm not really in the woods and it's taken me a long long time I used to be able to go in the woods and sit down and take a nap up against the tree and I couldn't do that anymore you know, wow. because I had so many questions on what this is. I know I didn't hallucinate it. I, I took in so much information. Yeah. And I know that you've helped me with these drawings and everything. And um, hopefully someday you'll be able to put them up here so people can actually see the whole thing. I know that you have plans for them to put them in, uh, to donate them to the mu a museum. I think it's in Virginia. Uh, there's a, uh, there's, a, there's, there's multiple museums that that we could put your images in and your images will be in this video yeah. for when you're describing what you're seeing, your images will be in the video uh, so people can see them. Um, you know, after your encounter, you know, you had such a up close and personal face to face at five feet away. Yeah. So how, what, you know, when you first, we first started talking, you said this is like an ancient, like a kind of a, a caveman, but, you know, yeah. not, not apish Sorry, yeah. at all, you know, that, that it was not apish nah, at all. Right. So um, in it how, wasn't. what do you feel that these, these are, I mean, in your, in your heart and your mind, these are a people, an ancient people. Yeah. Yeah. They're described as native Americans. They are uh, chief Joseph actually, uh, there's a movie about Chief Joseph. Uh, there's books out about him. If anybody knows about Chief Joseph, if you don't look him up, you're going to, it's very intriguing. He stopped at one point on, on fleeing from the cavalry when he was going up towards Canada. And he stopped for uh, asylum in several places. One of them was with these people. He describes it. Teddy Roosevelt describes it. Everybody out there describes it exactly the way I'm going to tell people right now. What I seen was very Native American caveman looking uh, with high cheekbones. Uh, the skin was dark, though. The mm -hmm. nose was flat. Uh, very, very man-like, right down to the hands. Of course, the blue eyes. <laughs> uh, what appears to be a lot of hair on a lot of them's face well masked with the complexion at a distance 
you'd have a hard time looking at a, at a, at a person, including me, if I was standing in the shadow at 50 yards saying Ernie has a full beard or Ernie has a goatee or if Ernie has a beard at all. Mm -hmm. So when you see them like that, it appears that unless you're close up, that their whole face is hairy like, like a monkey or whatever. And of course, mm -hmm. we have that psychological thing where we do uh, photo overlay. Yes. you know, or a paradilia, mm -hmm. you know, a lot mm -hmm. of these things play, play into this, including fear and time and distance. This was very, very man-like. It pretty much acted very man-like. It acted uh, like I was in the land of the lost, like it was a caveman type thing, but not with the intelligence that we would be led to believe that they were just you know igor and thor you know with clubs running around grunting uh <laughs> this thing actually had the ability to communicate yeah yeah and that was the mind-boggling part i it, it it didn't fit what it was doing and th there again the psychology in there i just seen something on it it's something crying hill uh, in psychology, I think it is, where your mind has no place to put the peg. It's too much human life. That's why when cartoons, when we watch cartoons, they weren't allowed to draw five fingers on cartoon figures because it's too disturbing to people to see something that's mm -hmm. human like. Yeah. And I believe that's where this is, is when people first see it doesn't fit anything that you're ready for it, it you want to put it in the category of an animal but you can't because it's too human like yeah you know some people would say monster well that's a that's a pretty good uh uh analogy of, of what a, 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 a whole that you can put that peg yeah like a monster um when he seemed to show you um he seemed to be very curious compassion. about you well yeah he seemed to be he very was. Yeah, yes. very like how did you get here without me almost like he wanted to yeah, see exactly. who you were and show you i mean he's he also seemed to show you respect like the nod that he gave you and he did yeah yes he did he did and and, and i agree with that is he wanted to know was i real <laughs> you know which which will put us down another rabbit hole if he's thinking am i real and he knows what yeah. is real and what is not like he's checking me out like and I mean, he checked me out as he did his hand gestures and walked towards me. He was checking me out. Now, some people say to me, well, are you sure it was a man or, or a male? Well, it, it, it didn't have mammaries. It didn't have breasts. OK. And I was not going to check him out. OK. <laughs> I, you know, I, I like to throw that in there because let's face it, guys. It's not something that we really do, particularly if you're a trained fighter. I'm watching for the nutcase, all right? I'm watching for the cheese to slide off the cracker in my opponent and for him to make a move on me. I'm looking for them shoulders to move, the head to give away his, his, his what he's going to do. Is he going to just come at me, you know? Yeah. If he would have, I, I, I would not be here today. You know, I, I think I would have got him, but he would have, nobody know. I'd be a 4 one I'd be on a David Pallady show, missing 4 one Whatever right. happened to Ernie. Right, you know? right. But yes, very, very, very man-like. Very caveman-ishy with the brow ridge, uh, the, the high cheekbones, Native American, and the dark skin tone. Yeah. The dark skin tone. Yeah. You know, yeah. the, the fingernails he wasn't dirty. Like maybe he had maybe he had take soaked himself down in the reservoir or something to get rid of any stink so that nothing would smell him because in all actuality, where he was set up, if anything was over if I had moved over to that area where he was, maybe those deer could might have picked up my scent. But where I was, they couldn't because they were too far to, to you know, I want to say towards his, 
his mm -hmm. area mm -hmm. between us, but on the other side of the stone walls where they couldn't smell me. I was coming up be behind him and down down the ridge. Usually when the deer are on a ridge, that 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 draft will blow up the ridge. But it was yeah. good enough that morning there it wasn't doing that at all. It was yeah. crispy cold out, so they couldn't really pick up the smell. I think they heard me and that's why I, I jumped them up yeah. out of there. And yeah. I think that they were closing in on those deer. It was yeah. almost like they were herding the, the deer into that general direction towards this one here, where sure. if they attack, it could carry on with the run like wolves will do. Another one will pick up the chase or whatever. Sure. Yeah. But, totally um, pla totally planned. Yeah. And highly intelligent. Yeah. Yeah, highly. So uh, the, yeah, I, I believe so. So after after your encounter, um, I, I mean, I don't know how you could not have this experience and not be changed. Um, but can you can you tell yeah, us definitely. like just share with us like how did it change? Did it change your worldview? I mean, now there's there's this human Absolutely. out there. So Absolutely. how how did Absolutely. that? I never. Yeah, I I, I had my beliefs. I was pretty much. You know, I was brought up in a parochial school, uh, Catholic, Roman Catholic. Um, I figured, well, maybe it might be. I've seen the Patterson film, you know, when it kind of first came out. And, you know, I was always, always reading Science Digest and stuff. And I said, well, you know, that, that's, that, that, I, that's pretty cool. I wonder if my great uncle Arthur ever seen anything like that. And I said, but, gee, I would wish I would see something like that. But I probably won't because that was only one of them. Like, gee, I wonder if there's a dinosaur out there, you know. Yeah. Maybe somebody never, you know, it's still the last one, the last one, you know. <laughs> but after this happened to me, I, I really had to take a, a really good look at everything and, and say, really admit to myself, if somebody told me there was a pterodactyl out in their front yard, who am I to tell them it's not true, okay? Because mm -hmm. I've never seen one uh, doesn't really mean anything to me. I just have never seen one. All right, but for sure, I'm I. It's a possibility now in my life. You know, uh, anything is a possibility, and I just started reading everything that was out there, everything, every report I could get my hands on, and I never ever read a report like this report here. And I was, I said, oh my God, I said, I wish somebody would please come out and tell and say that they seen even part of something like this, you know, nobody yeah. ever did. Nobody ever has. And I'm sure they are out there. Mm -hmm. And I feel strongly that by me doing this, mm -hmm. that that person will hear this. I never wanted anybody to plagiarize any part of this. I didn't really want to tell anybody the intricate details of this because I didn't want them to go out and kill one. And if people listen to the, the, the Rogers and Patterson interviews by Larry Batson or Larry Batson give the account of his interview, the first time they were interviewed, and I don't remember which one it was, had him in his rifle scope. And you'll hear other hunters, hunters particularly, Absolutely. see these things close up and have had them in their scopes. Absolutely. And the reason why they did not pull the trigger was because of what they saw. That's right. It right. is not an animal in any sense of the word. We cannot take them out of our category. We need to look at them as if, just like the Native Americans, these things are just like us, like a missing link, or let's say one of the missing links. Let's face it, Darwin was commissioned to make that drawing. Yeah. And you can't say that something is missing unless you know what it is. You can't say your car keys are missing unless you know it's your car keys. Right. And therefore, we can't say a missing link unless we know there really is a missing link. We just don't mm -hmm. want to put it in there. We don't ever want to admit that they are out there. How did they survive this long? God only knows. Yeah. I think they lived off the environment. Sure. I think that the Native Americans learned about the herbs from them. I think they've been around for a very, very long time. 
and their DNA has, for some reason, never really changed. You know, I mean, pretty much all the animals that we see, their DNA has been changed. Ours has. If we dig deep enough into it, we find that, yeah, we do got, there is a little splice in there that nobody knows how it got there, but mm -hmm. our DNA has been changed. Mm -hmm. So again, has it changed me? It certainly has. I want to tell people, particularly when I hear them talk a little bit about it, you know, I may be sitting in the break room or whatever and overhear somebody and I, and I, I want to chime in. And if I chime in, I shut down, you know, after, after a few words, because let's face it, this is bizarre. <laughs> People can believe what they want. Just prepare yourself. I do every time I go in the woods, you know, don't go in there willy nilly. Don't go in there. Be at peace with the woods. You'll find that when you walk into these woods, and you sit down, there isn't anything there. But if you sit down and you become at peace with the woods, the chipmunks come out, the squirrels right. come out. They can run and raid by you. They can run and raid up to you. The birds will land next to you. Yeah, you're being accepted. Yeah. You know, um, people think if they throw a rock into or pebble into a into the water, into a pond, that the ripples stop when it reaches the shore. No, if, if mm -hmm. it goes up, it's like a sound wave. And, and every every animal in there signals the next one in there. Yeah. You know, they they know. All the animals know. So for sure, these things know. Who are they? I don't. I don't know. I would like to know. It's no longer what are they. It's actually a W H O. Who are they? Are they? They. Today I find myself when people send me, we call them blob squatches or blurs. Or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Please stop it. Yeah. You know, if, if wait for that most tuned time. I have a theory on why your phone doesn't do what it does. Yeah. But try to be precise in this because all you do is you hurt the people that are out there. I'm not going to say that you don't, don't hurt me uh, in a way you do because you're hurting somebody else that I really need to hear from. I need these people to stand up and tell the community that's out there that yes uh, I have seen them and I know of accounts you know where they have actually had them in their garden and they thought that they were people mm -hmm. okay well, to get close to get closer and go that's not <laughs> people people <laughs> like us kind of yeah. people yeah it's a different kind of people yeah so yeah it's 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 forever changed me in that aspect um yeah. it's good to know that I do have one out there that um, uh, watches over me. Um, I'd like to say that things have happened since then out there, but let's just stick with that one right there. <laughs> and it's happened to people that have been been with me. So, oh, you know, that's awesome. um, yeah, uh, I, I really do thank you for doing this. I know that I have uh, an original drawing done by somebody else that you work with. It was never finished. It be, because it's too kind of mind boggling for some people, you know, and again, there's a lot of psychology into what you're looking at. Practice being an observer. That's what I strongly tell, uh, recommend to people. Yeah. Practice that. You yeah. know, it, it takes, it takes some talent. You can't look at, you couldn't look at your mother running through the woods at, at 75 yards for five seconds and say for sure that was your mom. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you can, but. <laughs> I highly doubt it, yeah. you know, or if it was this or it was that. It's it's difficult to do. My encounter lasted for at least 10 minutes. Yeah, and, and up, up um, close. Yeah. Uh, yeah, really up close. Yeah, how do I? Yeah. I thought for sure. Yeah, I thought for sure there had to be somebody out there yet. You know, you had a lot, uh, a long time with these. But then I've heard some encounters that are like, I, I, I feel for the people. Um, I'm not, I can't say it's not true. I can only, I can only say, you know, that's bizarre. <laughs> you know, and it, it, believe me, after after you, after everybody hearing this here, this is bizarre. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But it's back. Well, I hope, I it's hope, back. I hope that we get this out there, and that a lot, you know, a lot of people see it, and that more people will feel free 
to come forward and share, share their so. story. Yeah, and thank you. Yeah, and, and I so hope, much. and I hope that, that, that maybe it might put an end to hoaxers or anybody that wants to try to copy and and any of this. You know, think about it, think hard about it. You know, when you put your trust and your belief into somebody, that's good enough. That's the support that that, that the people need to have these close encounters. Yeah. Because believe me, we we did suffer for all these years of, of the fear of being ridiculed and sure. being ridiculed for this. Yeah, we are out there, the, and and so are these these people. Right. Right. So. Well, Ernie, thank you so much for being here today, and thank you for sharing your story. And um, you'll be hearing from me real You're soon. Welcome. Going to be sending you some images. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Glad, glad to hear that. I can't wait to see him, and I I hope you do put him up for your audience so oh, they can see him and uh, send him in the right direction to the museum or wherever they're going to put these. And I'll be sending you the maps and the uh, videos. Or the video that the, the Massachusetts Hilltown Hiker Association did of that area, yeah. and they actually has a mark on the top of that mountain. That's precisely yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Top. All right, Ernie. Well, thank you so much you. again for being here, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. You're welcome. Right. You're welcome. You have a great day today. Thank you. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye.